Hi, welcome back to HANA Developer Channel. My name is Srikant. In this series of videos, I'm explaining the concepts of HANA Access Advanced Server and Web IDE for HANA developments. In this video, I'm going to show you developing SDI flow graphs in Web IDE for HANA. I logged on to HANA Express Edition Web IDE for HANA for doing this demo. This is a sample flow graph on my screen who created a development workspace before getting into the details of this object, I'll give a brief introduction to this object. See, Flowgraph is part of native SCP HANA smart data integration, which is used to transfer the data from a source to target. It's not new in Web IDE for HANA. It's, all, it's taken from HANA Web Workbench in Access Classic, which you can see uh, we used to have this in Access classic web-based web development workbench of HANA. However, in Web IDE for HANA, it is slightly changed in terms of GUI, navigations, and building the object in, into the database with HDI container. We're going to see all these changes in this particular demo. So in this exercise, I'm going to load uh, EPM data into CDS tables. I'm going to create several CDS documents with entities as tables using Web IDE for HANA and then configure the flow graphs to transform the data from the tables and then execute them to see the final output of the data. That's the objective of this demo. Okay, let's start the demo with the flat files upload into my Web IDE for HANA. For this purpose, for this demo purpose, I have created several flat files with respect to EPM data content got four files, business partner address, products and text, master data files, and I've got two sales order files, one for header and then text. I also have some other files for getting the CDS documents and table data functions. We're going to see them after uploading the data into Web IDE for HANA. I'm going to upload this folder into Web IDE for HANA now. Access Web IDE for HANA and choose the source folder and then import from file system going to browse through the, my desktop and I have my EPM data file uh, chipped file attached and then say okay open. I'm going to adjust this folder to have source as my destination and I extract archive. It's going to get all the files from that folder, chip folder into this web ID for HANA. So I can see set of files. Uh, I have some files with CSV extension. They are all flat files can open and check the data in there, uh, business partner, etc. Going to close them and also have a couple of serious documents which are for one is for master data. If I open this one, I can see all the structures of those four tables um, which, are, which are going to get built in my database. This is for the sales order. I can see the two tables which are going to get built after the activation process. After the CDS document activation completed, I'm going to upload the data from these flat files into those CDS tables. In order to do that, I have got a file which contains the uh, as, as, as code to upload the data from flat file into the database tables. So I may have to adjust the uh, name space in order to make sure uh, the namespace is of, is matching to the of the path of what I have in my web ID for HANA. Okay, now I'm going to select the top folder and say okay uh, to build it. Now my build is completed. I can go to my database and check uh, all the tables which got created as part of my upload process and activation process. You can also see uh, the data uploaded into these tables as well. You can right click and say open data. There's a lot of data in there. I can also do the uh, flat files upload and activation process from Git repository. Instead of uploading or importing from the folder, I can also clone the repository uh, from Git. So git clone repository and uh, my 
folder is going to be in git clone uh, in, in a github repository and then i i am able to I, I would be able to clone that repository and get all the files in there so in this demo i am just up, uploading the documents from my desktop into the web id for hana folder directly but alternatively you can do this procedure of cloning the repository from github now my data set is ready i'm going to work on the flow graphs with several different transformations for that i'm going to choose my source folder and say new flow graph my fg for demo I mean to the layout of the flow graph you can see the plus icon right here is going to uh, help me in getting the node from the available nodes then I can configure what are the required nodes to configure my data flow here so I'm going to choose a data source to start with I place here and I'm going to configure my data source my data source is going to be a HANA object I'm going to search for my, my object here in this case it is the business partner got it and then say finish I can check my columns in the bottom so these are my columns which are taken from the table business partner I say apply and my data source is now ready I can have a join transformation and also filter combination filter transformation together to perform a data flow and up, update the transform data into a database table that's the objective of this example in order to do that I'm going to uh, get the join operation in there and also I need to have another data source to get my data source table which is going to be um, address table apply it now I've got two tables two data sources and I'm going to join these two data sources together to get my required output columns it's very simple just connect these two to this two. I can add multiple join nodes to add more data sources for this join operation okay I'm fine with these two tables going into the settings uh, what is going to be my join criteria I have to define my left and right table and the join type to configure this join uh, my left is going to be uh, the data source join uh, one which is my business partner table data output and then in my right table in a, a right operation I'm going to use the join one which is my address table data source or address table data output my join type is going to be inner I have several options left right full and cross join in this in this example I'm going to use left outer join I'm going to define my conditions here I have my address ID from my left table is equal to address ID from the right table and say apply and I'm going to choose the output columns to display or to process further I don't need an address ID two times so I'm going to remove that one from there so I got all the fields from my business partner then I also uh, getting the city country region from the address table as an output to it say apply it so now my join condition is ready now I'm going to apply a filter condition on my region so in order to do that I need another transformation which is going to be projection here can connect the output of the join condition to this projection okay I'm going into the setting and I got a filter option here to control the to, to apply the where condition so in my filter I'm going to apply on the region so I can double click and say is equal to EMEA say apply I'm going to uh, transform this data into a template table for that I am going to add a data target here 
then connect the output of projection to this data target. So I'm going to configure the settings for this data target. It is going to be a template table. I am going to create this template table as a data flow graph business partner template. The columns are going to be the output from my source. Set, app, apply, and my flow graph is ready now. I'm going to save this flow graph. I'm going to activate this flow graph. My activation is completed. As soon as my activation is completed for this flow graph, there's going to be a store procedure created for this flow graph. I can check that store procedure in here. So this is the store procedure created. I can open and see the code in the store procedure, how it is created. Uh, this is a simple one line store procedure with an execution statement. So they, it's, going to ex, it's going to execute a store procedure flow graph task, which is my flow graph here. I can run this SQL uh, to, call this pro, to call this procedure, or I can execute this flow graph. In order to run the SQL, I go to the SQL and then just type in call and then procedure name. It's going to call. It's going to call the procedure, which is in turn is going to call the flow graph. Or I can come to this flow graph and then execute it. It's execute execution started and successfully completed. So now I can go to my database and check my target table, which is going to be. Um, partner template. Let me open open data. Okay, I can see that all the uh, EMEA region uh, data has been come into my target table for all the customers. Okay, now I'm going to show you another example which contains an aggregation and projection uh, transformations together. I'm in my development workspace. I'm going to create in my folder EPM data. New flow graph, which is going to be aggregation. Okay, I have in my layout. I I'm going to pick my data source. This time I'm going to configure this data source as um, sales uh, item data. Okay, and I don't need all these lot of uh, other fields. I'm just going to ignore everything. I don't want the quantities either. I'm just keeping it simple. And I'm going to introduce another transformation, which is aggregation here. I'm going to aggregate the data of net sales by product ID. So in order to do that, I am going to aggregate the net amount to sum. I also have the other options which can be aggregated. And then I choose my product ID group by. I don't need these um, sales order and then sales order item to be part of my aggregation. I can also apply some filters here and also do some having condition. So the having condition is going to be applied on the aggregated value of uh, product ID, not on the each record. If I wanted to apply the filter on each record value, I can do that here. It's what the having is for the aggregated value. I'm not defining any filters. I'm going to choose apply. And then I also wanted to introduce another uh, projection here just to calculate another column there which is going to be I'm connecting it here and and then I'm going to derive a new column here which is a flag this flag data type is going to be a varchar and just I need one length just to store my value and the mapping for this column can be a fixed value constant value or it could be 
with the result of any of the functions here. For now, for this example, I'm just keeping R as a constant value and then put this expression there. Apply it. I'm going to introduce a data target for storing this data. Connected, settings, I'm going to choose a template table. A data target is going to be uh, aggregated by product template. That's it. I'm going to save it and activate it. Activation completed. I'm going to run this now. Uh, execution completed. I'm going to see the data in the final table. You can see that uh, the net amount is being aggregated with respect to each product ID uh, I have in my data set. Okay. Similarly, we have uh, several other transformations which we can work on uh, while defining the flow graph configuration. You can see a whole bunch of transformations in case to split the data flow into two different parts and then uh, work accordingly. Union is to combine the two different data sets. Similarly, I've got history preserving and table comparison for slowly changing time, time changing dimensions and etc. So these are all not new in Web IDE for HANA. Most of 95% of the objects and transformations are taken from HANA Web Workbench, which I initially discussed uh, described. There are several changes happen in terms of navigations and GUI and some more new properties are getting introduced in Web IDE for HANA in every new religious. Okay, finally, um, all the changes which we un uh, noticed in Web IDE for HANA as a summary. So we can see that the first one is projection is newly introduced and it has got several new functionalities in terms of filtering, data mapping, um, new formula, data, calculations and etc. And also we can also see uh, the GUI changed to arrange or group these different transformations together at, according to their uh, kind of uh, category. And also uh, the big change with respect to uh, data warehousing foundation which is uh, NDSO, Na Native Data Store Object, now uh, can be loaded and activated using the flow graph. So I can have a data store object created in my HANA Web IDE and I can load the data into the NDSO using these flow graphs and also activate the data. Uh, even uh, deletion also can be possible using the flow graph and the flow graph can be attached to a task chain and the task chain can be configured as a, as a work process to run every day or our intervals. That's the biggest change. Um, we're going to see that in a different session about NDSO creation and NDSO uh, data upload process using flow graphs. Finally, uh, better GUI features compared with HANA Studio or Web Workbench and also a lot of uh, um, GUI improvements we can see in Web ID for HANA. In, uh, in terms of configuring the flow graphs in detail. That's about it. Uh, thanks for watching this video. We'll come up with another topic in next video. Thanks again. Bye.